fail to do that, will there be fewer Christians in heaven? No. So it's not like it's a classic example of you know, no, we, we are, he, tension between the human responsibility. No cameras. No cameras. Uh, you should have said this is because turn your back to the camera and then um, well I think I think you've actually answered my question about the, 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 what we would call the plague exactly so I'm I trying to think that's oh is that like yeah that's what I really was interested our, in our, our so, point our point is to you now you see here you need to understand where we're coming from as Muslims in terms of our faith in terms of our belief yeah. what we believe in, in now the issue is you see here for example, since you are worried, I assume you are worried about your your Bible, yes? Well, I'm. I'm. Well, I, 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 tend to, I mean, I've taken the trouble to read the Quran, and I'm now. I'm not reading. talking about the Quran. I'm talking about the Bible. Well, I'm. I, well, I, and I've read the Bible as well, so I'm intrigued about the differences. I Do you know when the Bible was compiled? Well, it was obviously written, as far as we understand it, it was written by eyewitnesses in terms of the New Testament, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then the Eastern Church and the Western Church came up with the tw same twenty-seven books of the, of the New Testament at the end of the. Uh, Actually, no, it wasn't was written by eyewitnesses. Like, for example, the earliest manuscript, yeah. for example, they said they found Paul. One second, okay. Paul, Paul, come, can you come a minute? It's a very good yeah, yeah. I'll go back. Yeah, just ask him. Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't got much. Yeah. More time. I yeah. Think, yeah. But let me. I mean, one of the key. I mean, I mean, that was the sort of just have to be something about the plague. That I said, sort of have to be reading this morning. But yeah. What? I mean, another you see, major question. Our, our. You should. I will tell you something. Yeah. The, the first. Night, Patches. The letter to Anthony. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah. so. It's a, it's a hundred and something after Jesus. I think it was later than that. Uh, the, the, yeah, I think it was yeah, in the three hundreds yeah. or so. How are you, Paul? Are you okay? Paul? How are you, Paul? Nice to see you again. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, 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 I'm still. I'm still. I'm still again. <laughs> come get, come get well, close here, Paul. I'm still engaging. Well, I'm still. Yeah. You'll be on the right side of the debate. You'll, be, you'll yeah. still. You'll be pleased. Now, that I'm still reading the Quran. You're still wrestling. Yeah. 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 So we were we were discussing. We had we, we had about the plagues. we had about the, yeah, the plagues. What happens so, to the yeah, time yeah. of Moses? Yeah. And the fact there are nine yeah. mentioned down there in the yeah. Quran, ten oh. in the Old Testament. So that was quite yeah. interesting. Yeah. And the fact that there's no, there's no uh, Islamic recognition of the Passover. Is that? I'm, I'm a Christian. What do you mean by the Passover? You mean the, oh, the last no, separate or you well, mean the original Passover? Oh, the original. Yeah. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's not mentioned. Yeah. 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 So, what what are the ten signs in the mission of the Old Testament? If I remember correctly, it's blood, frogs, gnats, flies, livestock. Flies, so that's flies, yeah. yeah. Livestock, oil, hail, darkness, and then the firstborn children. And da the firstborn, the death of the firstborn children. So okay, but this is not a sign. This is something that happens between before Moses was sin. It's, it, and that's why that's why not killing the children. Yeah. It was before Moses. This is not part of the sign. It affects the Exodus. Yeah. The point, the, the point that Moses was saved and his brother Aaron, you know, sorry, his brother Aaron was saved and the Moses and his mother has to put him in a cot and yeah. to, to throw him in the river in the river. In a time that they were because in order not to be not to be killed. This before Moses. And, Live at the my, my point is, these are signs of, of the prophethood of Moses, peace be upon him. These are not just only for the children of Israel. Those came with Moses, peace be upon him. Do you, do you see the difference? So, 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 I missed that. so when he came to Pharaoh to debate him, yeah, yeah, to yeah. challenge him, that's the signs came. Yeah, that's yeah. The, the things which came before, those are not the signs. These are actions of the people. They start killing literally every every first boy, every boy. Well, In one year, one year they will kill the boy, and the following year they will save the boys. So that's why Aaron. Aaron was yeah, saved. Yeah, that's what, yeah, so Pharaoh was killing the, the firstborn sons of the uh, of the Israelites. Yeah. yeah. But then God said, "Because you have killed my firstborn son, I will kill your firstborn son unless you celebrate the Passover." So the angel of, in the the Old Testament, the angel of death, who was the tenth and final plague, the angel of death went over the land of Egypt and struck down the firstborn son of all humans and all animals as well, unless 
they sheltered under the blood of the Passover lamb. So, they, so God said there will be a death in every house. It'll either be the firstborn son or it'll be the lamb. And therefore, they were instructed, which they still do to the day, the Jews still do to the day, they took the blood of the lamb and they put but, it on the doorpost of the lintel. But what is and the, as the angel of the death came over the land, it passed, passed over. That's, that's why it's called that's Passover. That's the whole point. That's, that's why it's called Passover. Pass, pass that's, that's why it's called Passover. It passed over them. That's it, yeah. That's, that's, why, that's why it's called Passover, yeah. That's, yeah. Why, that's why it's called the Passover. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's still celebrated to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So the angel of but, but we have, we have, Passover, if, you saw, if the angel of death saw the blood, of the lamb on the doors, he would pass over that house and not kill the firstborn son in that household because the lamb acts as a substitute. The lamb, the lamb takes the place of the firstborn. So the angel will not recognize that this house have slaughter or not, except if they see a blood on the door. The, the, the angel won't kill the firstborn son of that household if they saw the blood of the lamb on the door. That's right. What that's what the Jews. What about celebrate every around Easter time every year to this day? So the angel they don't have the access except through to see the signs on the door. They don't. They they they're not permitted to kill the first one unless they see the blood. That's it. See, that, that, that's a big issue, by the way. But going back to the point, because we we're, we're discussing about the Christianity, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and that's why we mentioned about the, the preservation of the Bible and and the preservation of the Old Testament. Yeah. That's the thing here, which I need your assessment, please, Paul, about about the preservation. Well, really, I thought it was about all these uh, plagues. No, no, no. Was, I'm not an expert on plagues. I, 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 okay. <laughs> the, you well, I know about plagues. Yeah, no, the Passover. One, one, I mean, I'm, have to, I'm afraid I'm yeah. going to get about five minutes. Uh, we're, we're talking about the preservation the other, of the Old Testament. Question to you, Paul, as I've got you, because I was I was reflecting on what you said. Our last conversation was about six months ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, one of my big things which keeps on churning in my mind is the concept of grace, which I know you're very familiar with. With. But would you kind of sort of recognize that even if the Christian concept of grace is not true, even if it's not true, the concept of grace creates an idea, a concept of God that is more loving and more just than the Islamic idea, even if it's wrong. Would you, would you recognize no, I see it the other way around. I think the Islamic okay. understanding of mercy and grace is far more real and profound than the Christian. Okay. Give me an example. In Christianity, there is no real forgiveness of sins. It just doesn't exist. For the forgiveness of sins, but for a for sins to be uh, forgiven by a blood atonement, it's a human sacrifice, is not real forgiveness, but a payment of a debt, a sin debt, is the language that Paul okay. uses. In contrast, in Islam, where God is called Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, God is the most merciful, the most compassionate, and he forgives whom he wishes, uh, a sinner who repents. And that's what Jesus teaches, actually, in uh, the Lord's Prayer, in Matthew chapter 6. He teaches it in the parable of the uh, prodigal son in Luke 15, and the, the parable of the tax collector and the Pharisee in Luke 18, and so on and so on. For Jesus, you pray directly to God for that intermediary, and God directly forgives the sins because he is forgiving and merciful. In Christianity, particularly in Western evangelical Christianity, God doesn't do that. He must have a sacrifice, yeah. a human sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And only by the blood of that human, human sacrifice divine, can, 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 sacrifice. can God forgive people. Yeah. I would say that's not forgiveness, that's not mercy, and it's certainly not just. Why? Because the person, the human being that is killed, tortured to death, horribly, his blood is required by this bloodthirsty deity. Which the is an innocent, the picture, is an innocent, human, is an innocent yeah, human being. Is an innocent human being. And we know, and, we, and we know from Ezekiel, for example, and other prophets, that sin cannot be transmitted to other people. We are responsible for our own actions. In Christianity, our, our sins allegedly are somehow transmitted or given oh, to. Yeah. But he's and, described and so, as the Lamb of God. Well, you, you may call him a lamb, but he had two legs, not four. <laughs> he didn't have a tail, <laughs> yeah, but, and he didn't go, ba ba. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a man. Yeah, but he was the guy. He, yeah, but he was the guy. He's like a duck. And, and the, Bible, <laughs> the Bible prohibits uh, metaphorical killing of human beings for sacrifice. It is uh, outlawed, it's God's law in the, in the Torah. So to actually have a blood sacrifice of a human being, not only is it repugnant, it doesn't involve God being forgiving. It's also brought out this haram in the law of God on every count. Islam, God is doesn't require human sacrifice because he is merciful. And I say Jesus was a Muslim prophet. 
he was Islamic because what he taught in the early Gospels is exactly what we find in the Quran and exactly what we find in the Hadith. So we don't find it. Follow Jesus today, you must embrace Islam. Well, what do you make, if I may come back to you, what do you make of all those sacrifices going on, you know, in Old Testament days, day after day, year after year, the fact there's a Day of Atonement, okay. the fact there's the Passover, yep. which the Jews... What, what's your understanding of all that? Can I ask a, a quick clarification question? I'm not, I'm not being funny here, but have you read the book of Leviticus? I have. Excellent, because now I can refer to it, and I'm not, I'm not referring to something you haven't read. Yeah, yeah sure. Okay. I've, got it, look, I've got it here. We know we excellent, we can look at that. So if you look at Leviticus chapter 6 and chapter 7, specifically dedicated to sin offerings. Yeah. There are other offerings in chapter 1. These are Thanksgiving offerings, yeah. other kinds of offerings. Yeah. But, th but these ones are sin offerings. Yeah. And if you read the refrain that constantly goes through chapter 6 and chapter 7 and chapter 8, is that these sin offerings are for unintentional sin, for inadvertent sin. You can get the Bible, you can look at it however you want. It doesn't say that they are for intention. Well, what's an intention? How do I inadvertently commit a sin in, in Judaism? How, can you give us a think of how uh, Well, if you, if you touch the dead body, or if you were a woman and you, it was your time of, dare I say, <laughs> that's, you know, it's, 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 it's not really a sin, it's an uncleanliness. Yeah, or uncleanliness, but you, I think, if you're cleansed from your leprosy, no, this is not sin. The being a leper is not a sinful condition. You don't know, no, but you're unclean. But I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that the the Old Testament sacrifices were yeah. sin. No, because it's so. Okay, so it could be sacrificed for many, many different reasons. You have Thanksgiving sacrifices. I mean, if you get yeah. the Bible out now, you can look at chapter one. And then chapter 2 has other kinds of sacrifice chapters. Only when you get to chapter 6, so you get sin offerings. So the Day of Atonement is 16, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, so yeah. Yom Kippur is a seven. So what I'm saying is the regular sacrifice for sin in the temple are not for intentional sin. Now, the unintentional might be, for example, if, um, I, I don't know, if, uh, you know, you can't work on the Sabbath. And I miss that class, and off I go and do this project. Now, that is unintentional. I don't mean to deliberately sin, but I have sinned. I violated the commandment of God, the Ten Commandments. So I need to sacrifice in the temple. Mm -hmm. But that's an unintentional sin. If I deliberately defy the law about the Sabbath in the Ten Commandments, there is no sacrifice. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. And we know this uh, because if you talk to Orthodox rabbis today, which I've done, one of them happens to be a friend, uh, Tobias Singer, actually, you might have heard of him, is a rabbi based in Jerusalem. Okay. He frequently lectures to uh, Christians uh, on this. He, and he's a qualified writer. He will tell you this is not Jewish teaching, what you're saying. You don't need a sacrifice for all sins. And the final point is this imagine. Uh, so, what's your understanding of, of, of the Day of Atonement Yom Kippur then? So, this you know, Christian understanding is that this sin separates human beings from human beings and human beings from God. And always separates. So at home and at one moment, and therefore the sacrifice brings this relationship back together by the death of the two. Yeah, but that's not what Jesus goats. taught. That's not what Jesus taught. How we reconciled with God according to the teaching of Jesus in the uh, in, this, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. How we reconciled. How we made right with God. Well, I would. I mean, maybe I've got this wrong, but my understanding is that we are justified. And, and by his blood shed on the cross. That's exactly what Paul says. Yeah. He says in Romans chapter 3, you're right. Let's ask you about Jesus, not Paul. Yeah, yeah, but but obviously we would say that Paul was a, I, 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 I think they're different religions. <laughs> okay. what, what Paul teaches about atonement yeah. is completely different from what Jesus taught in the Gospel. Let me give you an example. Yeah, uh, Luke 18, and there are lots of examples like this. This one yeah. example of many I could give. Two people go up to the temple in Jerusalem to pray. There's a tax collector, bad guy, collects yeah, taxes on behalf of the Romans. Yeah. We all go boo, you yeah, have to say. Yeah, boo. And, then there's a, <laughs> and then there's a Pharisee, the good guy, because yeah. he's pious, he prays, he fasts. Yeah, yeah. He's a good guy, like a good person, you know. So th th this is the story. They both go to the temple to pray. And the Pharisee, according to Jesus' teaching, uh, basically. God, I'm not like this tax collector. Yeah, yeah. I pray, I fast. I do. I, I, I do. I but it is Jew. Yeah. Thank God I'm not like this guy. And the tax collector, the bad guy, who doesn't even look up to heaven, he beats his chest and says, God have mercy on me, a sinner. 
and, and, and Jesus, Jesus said that man went home justified before God because What's the reason Jesus gives? Well, because he repented and he, and he turned to God. Really? Yeah. You, well, but notice it's nothing to do with him dying on a cross for sins. No. But what was the actual reason? No, so just to finish this off, no. what was the actual reason Jesus gave? Because we're not quite there. Yeah, yeah, but not quite. Okay, what's your understanding? Uh, what, but what did Jesus say? Not my understanding. Oh. What did Jesus, <laughs> uh, I'm looking at what said, Jesus said. Does he say, today you will go home? Justified or did they go home? No, he, he said, yes, the, the tax collector went home justified before God because, and then he gives the reason why. Now, this is the gospel, this is the injury, yeah. in yeah. my view, of Jesus. And interesting, and it's nothing to do with you, but I, I've asked hundreds of Christians this question, and do you know how many have got it right? In only one, you may be the second, who ever got this question right. In other words, they've actually told me what Jesus said in Luke 18. I can't quite remember. They never, they never remember. And this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. How we're made right with God. So Jesus says, whoever humbles himself before God will be exalted. Whoever exalts himself will be humble. So the The words of the prophet. I'm not a few a, a, a fluent Arabic speaker, but tell me, Sheikh, yeah. what is the word what does the word Muslim mean in English? It's an Arabic Submit, word. Submitting Submission to, to God. God. Really? Yes. So Jesus is preaching a very pure form of Islam in that parable. That's why and that's why you must follow Muhammad. Who teaches exactly the same message as Jesus. And Muhammad peace be said the same word. Man tawadha alillahi rafa. Whoever humbles so, himself to Allah, oh, Allah exactly. will raise yeah. You see, a lot of these parables, you could find it in the Hadith. The picture of Muhammad. When I was a Christian like you, and I read the Hadith, I thought, I've heard this before. I've heard it in the Gospels. That's how I made the connection so, between you, Muhammad and Jesus, peace be upon the Sorry? Can you move to the side, please? Only because you're blocking the camera. Yeah. I want to block the camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so you. Yeah. My point is this when it comes to how we're reconciled with God, how we're justified before God, how our. What Paul teaches, which is blood sacrifice for atonement, is a different religion. And I'm saying we shouldn't follow the religion of Paul, we should follow the religion of Jesus and all the prophets of God, which is the same religion. The religion of this Paul. I take it as a Muslim, no, you would deny that Jesus died at all. Is that, is that, yeah. <laughs> the question is, how are we made, how are we made right before God? Yeah. Before God? And Jesus, our prayer, forgive us our Mary, not through an intermediary. It starts our father, so you're already, you're already reconciled if you're referring to God as our father. But how, how we give, how our sins forgiven? Forgive us, this is a big prayer that Jesus apparently yeah. taught in the Bible. And we are to pray directly to God, not to Jesus, the Holy Spirit, or yeah. Mary, yeah. to pray, forgive us our trespasses, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And the only condition here, in verse, I think it's verse 12, and unless you forgive your brother his sins, your, your God will not forgive you your sins. That's the only caveat. Now, the expectation there, I would submit, is that God will forgive your sins if you pray to him in that way. If that is true, then Paul's whole doctrine of blood is completely irrelevant, even if it was directly <laughs> Which it's not. You know, Unnecessary anyway, because forgiveness of sins is already uh, possible in Jesus. And the second example, I give you dozens of examples of Jesus where people are welcomed into of presence of forgiveness of sins by any reference to any sacrifice. Remember, Jesus says, Remember, remember this, remember what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. It's actually quoting. The <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, but, 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 I know, but no, Christians have a You see, when you, when you say, I desire mercy, that's sacrifice. Yes, Don't you think so that makes more sense yes. than the sacrifice? You said you have to have a, you have to have a sacrifice. Yeah. And the, the word of well, Jesus, I desire mercy. You see, you, 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 literally, you literally contradict the teachings of Jesus just now. Yes, You're basically, I mean, he's I, the opposite to this. If I remember context back correctly, that those who felt that they were 
the sacrifice is the, the, the religion of sacrifice, if you like, rather than the reality of his sacrifice, which is the way in which God can express mercy. But he no, didn't no, no. say that. That's You're just like, adding words to, the, well, to things that he I'm didn't trying, say. I'm hopefully <laughs> Trying to add the context, if I remember correctly. I can give yeah. you, now if you like, I can give you more examples of the same teachings of Jesus, which are called with Islam, if you like, or we can focus on why you think that even though Jesus said sins were forgiven by praying directly to your father, that wasn't true, but we really need a human sacrifice, as, as Paul taught. I, can you either reconcile that or give you some more teachings from Jesus, which makes the same point from Jesus? Because there are well, dozens of examples. I'd love to examples. discuss it more, but unfortunately I've got to go and talk okay. to you, but... Well, this is, okay. Oh, there you go. Well, maybe in anyway, six months' time... I appreciate it. Six months' time, you'll come back. I appreciate yeah. it. Continue the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully next you know, time. Uh, hopefully next time. But as well, it's, yeah. good, it's good to reflect on it. Oh, I do, so. I do. And, I, you know, I'll go, and, I'll go away and think, and I'll go away and read more of Quran. Yeah, that's good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Again? What's your name, Douglas? Ed. 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 All right, nice to meet you. You see here, Paul, you know, um, SubhanAllah, first of all, may Allah guide him. That's something which is good. And actually, he is a genuine because he, he is. No, he's a great guy. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy. Right, so I like. Down here, I, yeah. I, I genuinely respect. And actually, he comes as well from academic perspective. You yeah. know, he's not just only you know debating for the sake of debate, rather than wanted to find I the solutions. I suspect that he's a clergyman. I yeah. have a suspicion that he's a priest. Or, uh, yeah, I think he, so. He's got that kind of d demeanor. I, I, I think he's probably ordained. Yeah. He would never say that down here. <laughs> but I think I, I get the. I can smell clergy. I can tell them who they are. I think he is. Now you see here the continuation of the conversation that we have. This to educate, for example, us and, and everyone who's watching. Now, few few points. Now, as you mentioned, that the the Jesus of Islam, the Isa of Islam, basically is exactly what he was teaching in terms of the forgiveness, and and especially the point is the blood sacrifice is literally he said when, when you the the quotation that you brought which is you know i demand mercy i don't i don't demand no, he said, in matthew says learn jesus learn what this means and then quote i yes. desire mercy not sacrifice so he's, he's reminding the, the listeners to ponder that verse of god in the bible in the old testament we think of what this means so he's yes. reminding them that god is not interested in sacrifices he's interested in the things that Islam and, and his teaching share in common, mercy and, yeah. and so on, this is not what God wants. And that's why even in the Old Testament, what you mentioned, because I mentioned before here, on, uh, you know, we learned that, that the sacrifice in the Old Testament is not for the intentional sins, for the unintentional sins, things, people, they could make mistakes, this is exactly. something exactly. that happens by, by, yeah. by the people, so they will do kind of a sacrifice. And as we Muslims, for example, we do all here, for example, we, on the day of our high, etc. And that's not necessarily for a tournament or something like that. Rather than to do, we do it in order to, uh, you know, for the sake of God. And as well, we distribute the meat for the poor and the needy, etc. But the, the point is that the intentional sins, the person has to repent. Yeah, exactly. Basically, that's how it is. And actually, the God of love, according to them, if, as you mentioned here before, the God of love, if if God loves us, yeah, yeah, doesn't need a full sacrifice because if there's sacrifice, that, that, that means there is no forgiveness. That means as if there's no forgiveness, that means they're paid for. Exactly. Uh, adding to this, because this is before you came, and I said to him, for example, and that's what they sometimes they get triggered when I say to them, did Jesus commit suicide? They said, no, we can't say he's committed suicide. I said, if someone knows that he's going to come and he's going to be killed, a definite kill, it's, it's not something which is... If they believe Jesus is all-knowing, for example, as the world before he became a man, and he knows this, so he'll come in the form of a man, and then in that case, to don't you think this is kind of a suicidal thing? Yeah, it, it is, but it's wrong on so many levels. Uh, and the, yeah. Any one of those is enough to refute the argument. <laughs> the idea of human sacrifice is repellent and outlawed by God's law. Yeah. Uh, the idea that God is, uh, it doesn't forgive, he requires a payment of a debt, yeah. is also repellent if you, begin, if you believe in the God of love, the God of mercy and forgiveness, um, and, and, and all the other reasons as well. I mean, Jesus himself, according to the Gospels, prayed uh, the night on the night before yeah. he was betrayed that God would save him from this yeah. trial. And of course, as Muslims, we believe that God answered Jesus' prayer and rescued him. But Christians believe, must believe, that God tur turned away from Jesus and refused his plea to be rescued from danger and did not save him. And that itself is hugely problematic because allegedly Christians believe that God is yeah. God of love and so on. But he wouldn't even hear Jesus' prayer. He refused his prayer <laughs> of his prayer. own son. Just, his own yeah, rejected, rejected he rejected that. him. He was begging God, please 
take this cup from me. Yeah. And they have to believe that God said, sorry, no, I want Lord. you to suffer, be tortured horribly to death because I love you so much. Because I, mean, I love you, and I love you. Right. This is abuse. This is abuse. <laughs> this is child abuse. This is child abuse. So on many, many levels, the whole thing collapses. And to be fair, yeah. I want to be fair here, many Protestant Christians, particularly theologians in yeah. recent years, have, um, have rejected uh, Islam have rejected this doctrine and they've turned to the more Islamic doctrine of God uh, being merciful and loving and, 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 and turned their backs on that doctrine. Seriously, there are many uh, Protestant theologians have done that. So like who? Like the people? Well, I mean, most most bishops and most theologians in the Church of England probably actually. Seriously? Uh, no, they, they have because they, they recognize that it's a repellent doctrine. Uh, it, it doesn't fit in with the idea of God being loving. We would refuse Jesus' message who requires a sin sacrifice, human wow. sacrifice. This is not the gospel they, they believe in. Well, like that's so, interesting. Um, but evangelicals, though, who are still a small minority, though, in the church in general, they do believe that. Now, the other question is, were there any monotheist Christian in the first three centuries? Yes. Who are they? Well, um, they, they are called different names. Uh, uh, I call them the Ebionites. Ebionites. Uh, Ebionites. Uh, this is a Hebrew word meaning the poor. Um, and they were Jewish Christians. And they did not believe Jesus was God. They believed Jesus was a prophet sent uh, by God. They Ebionites. He was Ebionites. They were, he was a Messiah. Um, there was a disagreement amongst them. Some believed he was born of a virgin, some didn't. Yeah. Um, but they didn't believe that, that the human sacrifice was required. They were very Islamic, actually. And uh, the beginning of that movement, uh, I believe, started with James, the brother of Jesus. Yeah. He was the head of the, the Jesus movement in Jerusalem. Yeah, yeah. If you look at what he believed, what his religion was, it wasn't the same as what Paul believed at all. It's very different. And, and what he wasn't uh, following, you could say, he wasn't. Uh, he was a Jew in terms of as a, from you know from his lineage. But at the same time, he believed in Jesus to be a prophet yeah. of God. This yeah. James, the brothers of Jesus. That, that's right. And he believed, for example, some of the differences between James and Paul. James believed that uh, you were saved by your faith in God and your works, your deeds. Yes. Whereas Paul said you are only saved, saved. by your faith. In Jesus. In Jesus. Uh, and the blood. No, in the blood. No, no, yeah, and it is, it's a sacrifice on the cross, exactly. Yes. But that's not what James said. He said you believe, you believe in God and in your works. And that's what Islam teaches. Yes. It's not just faith alone. It's yeah. faith and works. God requires both of you. Paul says it's not required. So, uh -huh. so James is with Muslims on this fundamental matter of faith. I see. So the Abionites, yeah. were they chased by Constantine later on? No, they, they, they probably died out in the 4th and 5th centuries. Uh, this, that's when this is, our records... This is after Constantine, isn't it? Uh, is this, Constantine was in the, yeah, the Council of Nazis. 4th century. century. So, was, were, they, were they chased by Constantine? The, the, there are very few references... No, no, sorry, no is the answer yeah. as far as I know. But well, these Jewish Christians followed the Jewish law. They were Torah-observant Jews. They followed the Halakha, the yeah. Jewish law. Paul said the law had been abolished. Yes. Ephesians, his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 15, yes. he said, God has abolished the law with its commandments and regulations. James upheld the law. Yeah. We know that because multiple sources tell us. Josephus, the Jewish historian, actually talks more about James than about Jesus because uh, he, he was very yes. famous. And other sources as well mention James. He, yes. was, he was the head of the church, the yeah. first leader, not Peter, and yeah. he was a Torah observant Jew. So yeah. there was a tension, a, a schism between James yeah. and Paul. We even see that in Paul's letter to Galatians, where he says, men came from James to, to, yeah. to sort out Peter. So, it, it, Paul doesn't like James, and yet he was Paul's brother, not like James and he had a different, different religion, really, I think. Basically. Now, uh, what about the Nazarites? The Nazarites, uh, what, what they were, what's their faith? The Israelites. No, Nazarites or oh, the Nazarites. Nazarites. Well, you see, the Jewish Christians, I think, were known by different names. So some yeah. were called the Nazarenes. Nazarenes. Or the yeah. Nazarites. Now, why were they called that? There's a discussion about that. Yeah. Uh, my view is, because Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth, then they were the followers of the Nazarene, the man from Nazareth. That's, yeah. that's my view. Now, there are other theories. But they were, but they were monotheists. But, Yes. Oh. Yeah, these were Jewish Christians. They were Jewish Christians. Yeah, they could have been different sects of Jewish Christians, or the, part, the Ebionites, as they were called in the second century, were the biggest Jewish Christian group. Yeah. yeah. Now, the last thing, were there some no in the in the Christian history who were monotheists in the first three centuries, like non figures? Some people they would look up to them and say this person, apart from James, for example, the brother of Jesus. Well, this is an interesting question. Um, some people say that in the early two or three centuries, even leading Christians were not really Trinitarian. They believed that God was the true God. Yes, he had a son and so on, but yeah. the son wasn't fully God. So you had this sense of yeah. 
almost monotheism there. Yeah, yeah. But pure monotheism, I think you have to look to the Jewish Christians. Yeah. And, 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 and they were, and they became seen in the later Catholic Church as it emerged in the second century. Yeah. The Jewish Christians who were the original faith of the Jewish Jesus They Bible. fled to... They, 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 they did. Yeah. They, they became seen as heretics. The original followers of Jesus became yeah. heretics by the church and were uh, criticized and put down, Some ultimately stuff. persecuted out of existence yeah. by the church, which had actually rejected the religion of Jesus and Jesus' disciples. It's very ironic. It's very ironic. You mentioned to me about, about uh, Galish, Galicius, I think, was the, he was in the first century, yes? Well, the, the, Paul's letter to the Galatians written about AD, AD 50 or so, yeah. Yeah, uh, but, but then who's the, who's the, the who's the, um, there's a, um, a known priest who didn't believe in the crucifixion of Jesus, what's his name? A priest? Or, or some known figure? Oh, uh, well, when I did recently, I, there, there's some letters written by Ignatius of Antioch. Ignatius, Igna so, Ignatius of Antioch. I, I need to explain a bit though. Uh, he was a very famous bishop in the early church. He's a saint in most of the churches. Yeah. And he went off, he was. He lived most of his life in the first century. So his yeah. life possibly overlapped with some of yes. the apostles actually. A bit later, but overlapped In, 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 in the first century? In the first century. Yes. Be, as a very, very old man in his 80s, apparently, he was uh, tried and sent to Rome to be executed, be eaten by lions, basically. Seriously. As, as, as it happened in those days, the lions were a bit hungry, they wanted the Christians <laughs> to eat. And the Romans were very kind and they supplied some dinner. <laughs> and, um, the thing is, he wrote, he wrote seven authentic letters. That was authentic. And one of them uh, refers to Christians. He's criticizing them, by the way. He's not agreeing with them. So Ignatius of Antioch. Ignatius of Antioch criticizes those Christians who deny that Jesus was crucified. So we know by their form they existed because he criticized them. That's, that's what I was referring to. So he didn't believe that Jesus was crucified with No, Ignatius Antioch believed he was at what we would call a, a, a Catholic today. He yeah. certainly believed Jesus was crucified. But he referred to in his letters people who didn't believe that Jesus was crucified. Uh, and that's my point. So yeah. there was clear difference of opinion amongst Christians. Yeah. Some thought he was, some thought he wasn't crucified. Okay. That, that was my point. So he believed there's a different view in that in, the, in his letter. He referred to Christians who didn't believe Jesus. Yeah. What did he say to them? Well, he criticised them. He said you shouldn't believe that. But the point is, he referred to their existence. It's an indirect reference. To their okay. Therefore, we can deduce that certainly by the end of the first century or earlier, Christians there were some Christians who didn't believe Jesus was crucified. I, I thought I thought by the way, it's the other way around. I thought he believed that Jesus was crucified. No. So meaning he, 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 he knew yeah. he knew some people who who attribute who who identified themselves as Christian. Yes. And they believe that Jesus wasn't crucified, Correct. and he was criticizing Correct. them, which means it's kind of recognition about them, about their existence, basically. So they exist, they, they have acknowledgement they existed. So, so because some people say, oh, well, no Christian believe that. Before, and he didn't before, say about them, they're The Quran says this, yeah. no one would think that. Well, in the first century, and the beginning of the second century, there were Christians, and we know that because yeah. people refer to them in, in authentic letters we have. I see. And he didn't say that they're, uh, they're doing, committing heresies or whatever. He didn't say about them. Did he refer them that, or just only criticism? Well, you see, Ignatius was a man who believed Jesus was God. He, he was a follower of God. Yeah. Yeah. He's not someone we would agree with. Yes, yeah, I know. The point is that he was aware of these other Christians and he condemned them for believing what they did. He, he condemned those who followed the Jewish practices. Yeah. Uh, he, he condemned Jewish Christians as well in the same uh. letter. So he, he's basically a, a, an Orthodox Catholic bishop who's criticizing the heretics. But for us, they're not heretics. Uh, I see. I see. That's interesting. Allah is the khair upon Allah. May Allah reward you. Jazakallah khair. It was a, you know, it was an interesting discussion. Hopefully, we'll have a more discussion with him maybe next I mean, time. I, he's in a difficult position because we can't deny that what I've said about Jesus' teaching is in the Bible because it is in the Bible, <laughs> and it, but it contradicts what he believes about Christianity. So his answer is, bye. <laughs> no, I mean, it is. I like, what else can he say? Because yeah. he can't disagree with Jesus. He can't disagree with Paul in his own mind, so yeah. he's got a dilemma. So he literally had nothing to say. He had to go. By the way, the things that he has mentioned, that's, this is the, that's something which is, I believe that it has some issues. So, for example, what I call it, this the, the, the Passover. This is called the Passover. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't quite agree with what he said. It was yeah, quite accurate, I, I wasn't going to quibble about anything. But yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the point is, you see here, if God has commanded the angels to do something, yeah, for example, God command the angel to do something. Suppose go with them, yeah? 
means the angel, for example, in those people, some people who could fake it to put a blood, fake blood there or something like that. Meaning, the angels not only will recognize only the blood by the door in order to consider there is a sacrifice happened in this family or the, the sacrifice didn't happen in this family. It's not, it doesn't work like this, firstly. Secondly, if the children of Israel or, or if pharaohs, they have done all of these horrible things to the children of Israel, suppose this, yeah? I mean, we believe as well those young children who are newborn, for example, they are innocent, generally. So God, for example, again, he, you see here that how, because by the way, he, he is one of those who believe that, you know, that Jacob wrestled with God. Because before he came, he said, Jacob wrestled with God and, and, and Jacob defeated God, etc. That's why he gave him the land, etc. So all of these things, I said, look at this, look how you humiliate God to the extent a man will wrestle God and actually not just will wrestle him and will defeat him in the wrestling As you know, Brother Nye, the Torah has been changed. It's yes. not the original Torah. It, ha it has things which are not, shouldn't be in there. Yeah. Uh, it's been interfered with, corrupted. I see. And even Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah, in the yeah. Bible, our Bible today, yeah. chapter 8, verse 8, says that. It says, <laughs> it says the lying pens of the scribe have changed the Torah. So even the Bible, in one of its books, recognizes that it has actually happened. He said, not, he said what? Uh, in, uh, Jeremiah, in what you Jeremiah want? chapter 8, verse 8. Okay. It's well known for, uh, where Jeremiah himself uh, angrily denounces uh, the. Uh, the scribe, the Jewish scribe, who have altered, uh, changed the Torah. So this is not a, just a Muslim idea. This has been recognized even by Jews themselves. By Jews themselves. Uh, even in the Old Testament, which is a library of books. It's not just one volume, it's a yeah. library of books. So later books like Jeremiah have criticized yeah. the way the Torah has been altered. So this is this is something that supports the Muslim view, of course. And, and by the way, there is, uh, I mean, I know there is a gap uh, in, the, in terms of the nation yeah. in, the, in the Old Testament. Yeah. What, how, what is the gap? Is it 1,000 years or something? Well, is it? The oldest uh, copy of the Old Testament we have is uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, and that's dated around 200 BC, so okay. just over 2,000 years ago. But the events it describes, it, our Bibles talk about, yeah. goes back to the time of Moses, back to the time of Abraham. This is a, a, about 1,000 or 2,000 years before that. So there is no Isnad, there is no There's manuscript no at all for many, many centuries. Many, many centuries, a thousand years, however long you want to make it. So we have 200 years BC to the time of Moses when he wrote down the Torah, allegedly. Well, yeah. it's a thousand, years, <laughs> a thousand years. Where are, how do we know it's been accurately, reliably, faithfully transmitted? The answer is we don't. We don't. Except we know that has been changed. The Quran tells us this yeah. and says to use the uncorrupted, pure revelation of the Quran yes. in deciding what is true, what is false in it. But also the Bible writers themselves admit this Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 8. Look it up, Google it, and you'll see it says exactly that. الله يجزيك خير يا فول ما له رودي جزاك الله خير ما له انكريز ولا خير جزاك الله خير خير الله يبارك فيك جزاكم الله خير ما برضه جزاكم الله خير كواز انتريستينج الله يبارك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله